Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. Today we are going to take a look at Trajan's Forum and the Trajan Markets and Rome. I recorded some footage of this last year when we went during the summer, but I'm just now getting around uh, finishing the video about it. So let's start with uh, what the Trajan Forum is. So you're all familiar with the Roman Forum, a place where the people would meet and kind of the center of Rome. Now after the Roman Republic turned into the Roman Empire, some emperors decided to extend the forums. And that's when we get the Imperial Forums. These were a number of forums constructed between 46 BC and 113 AD. The first of these new Imperial Forums was Caesar's Forum and the last is Trajan's Forum, which we will have a look at today. Here you can kind of see what it would have looked like and what remains of it. The architect overseeing this construction was Apollodorus of Damascus. And as you might have guessed, the emperor that ordered the construction of it was Emperor Trajan. And he funded the construction of this complex with the spoils of war that he got from his conquest of Dacia. It was built in the valley between the Capitoline Hill and the Quirinal Hill. The form was inaugurated in 112, while Trajan's Column, which you can see over there, was erected and then inaugurated the year after, in 113. The main part of the Forum was a large open space, and flanking it on either side were these half-round structures. Only this one survives to this day, the other one has been destroyed and the one that survives are the Trajan markets, which we will have a look at later. On another side of the Forum stood the Basilica Ulpia, which is the building you can see depicted here, and that's what remains of it, some pillars. And over here you see also some of the flooring that was inside of the Basilica. Also, uh, it's named Basilica, but it's not the same as the Christian Basilicas we know today because this one did not have a religious function. It was dedicated to the administration of justice, commerce and also built to show the presence and the power of the emperor. Later however, Emperor Constantine, which was Christian, would base the construction of basilicas on this building right here. And that's how basilicas came to be associated with Christian churches. The Basilica Ulpia composed of a great central nave with some more side aisles on either side of it, separated by rows of columns. The columns and the walls were made of precious marble, while the roof was covered in gilded bronze tiles. Next to the basilica on either side of the forum there were also two libraries, one housing Latin documents and the other housing Greek documents. And between these two libraries and behind the basilica, stood the 38 meter or 125 foot high Trajan column, which you can see over here, it still stands today. And it commemorates Trajan's victory in the Dacian Wars. The lower half of the column illustrates the first, which took place between the years 101 and 102, and the top half illustrated the second war between 105 and 106. The interior of the column is hollow, and you can enter it by a small doorway at one side of the base. Then a spiral staircase can take you up 185 steps to give you access to the platform above. Built in the column as well, there are 43 window slits illuminating the inner spiral staircase. Ancient coins that were found indicate that initially plans were to put a statue of a bird, probably an eagle, on top of the column. But after it was constructed, a statue of Trajan was put there instead. The statue of Trajan disappeared in the Middle Ages, but on December the 4th, 1587, the top was crowned with a new statue. This new one was not of Trajan, but it was a bronze figure of Saint Peter, and the statue remains there to this day, as you can see. In the mid 9th century, the marble cobble blocks of the plaza were gradually taken away for reuse because of the good quality of marble. But after they were taken, it was replaced with concrete slabs, showing that the plaza was still in use as a public space in that time. 
in modern times only a part of the forum remains because as you can see a road was built on part of the complex which was constructed in 1933. Here are some more remnants of Trajan's forum. So I believe these would have been the, the decorations I think on the top of the pavilions I think that's what it's called like those uh, walkways under the pillars and you can see nice detail we got a rose there uh, inside we have some bigger artifacts so those were statues and uh, they're quite life-size they, they're like the size of real people also some uh, nice art there but yeah the main thing is that, uh, that I want to point out is that these are like life-size statues maybe even even bigger uh, and it, it's shows that it's really about perspective because you can see it was part of this big uh, elaborate um, pattern on this big building so if you would have stood on the forum they would they would have looked tiny but in reality standing next to them you can see they're actually like really big and like the effort that would have gone into decorating all the area around around it here you can see like the whole the whole area, everything was, was elaborately decorated. So now we've come to the Trajan Market. Over there, the area with the nice tiling was actually part of the Trajan Forum. You can see that building over there. Uh, there was a similar building on the other side of the Forum as well. But uh, the site we are at now was nestled in the hillside. So the Trajan Markets were kind of constructed around it. Here you have uh, a little closer look at that uh, preserved floor from that uh, one part of the forum. Still looks quite nice after like all these years. I, I believe it's restored, so don't think it always looked like that. But here we are down at the bottom. Uh, you get a nice look of the markets over here. You can see there are different levels. And uh, these are the little shops. Uh, I believe they're called the Berna. Those little shops in the Roman times, you can see the walls were nice and painted. It's kind of preserved, a little of the floor there as well. And um, as you might have uh, noticed, there are quite a lot of these around here. So some people consider this the oldest shopping mall uh, in the world. But here you got uh, even some more preserved floor. We're on the next level up now. So you can see it's, uh, it's a walkway around there with even more shops. Um, these shops as well, they tended to have an uh, upper loft, uh, a little attic, uh, made out of wood, so it, it's not there anymore. Uh, but that's where they would have stored their, their items and their stock. At the moment we're at the very top now. Uh, this is uh, kind of a gate, I believe. And there's a, a Roman road um, leading down the back of it as well, which you will go down. You can see those uh, basalt, uh, I believe it is, cobbles iconic for the Roman roads. So yeah, this is um, behind the main bit where we were before. Uh, you can see there are quite some uh, some more shops uh, nearby. Over here, these are some lead pipes, I believe, that were also found during the excavation. So they would have uh, transported water, if I remember correctly. You can see some more stalls there. They're all throughout the big, a big shopping center. They even had an inside bit as well, which was over here, and that was the main hall. Now it's used by the museum, so you, I didn't film in there, but uh, here are some pictures. In the Middle Ages, there were some more levels added on top. You can see them over there in like the different colored brick. You can kind of see the transition. So these weren't there during the Roman times. In the Middle Ages, this building was first used as a convent and then afterwards they were used as barracks. So yeah, so here is a better uh, perspective of it. You can see this area was built in the Middle Ages. You can see the different coloring bricks. And then you also have that big tower sticking out at the back, which was also a medieval construction. So that was it for this episode, but before you go, I want to mention that for most of my videos I use the Premiere feature on YouTube. So if you want to be one of the first to watch my video as it premieres for the first time and watch it together with me, kind of in the similar format as live streams, you can hit that bell icon on my channel to get notified whenever I will premiere a video. Thank you guys for watching. On screen right now, you can find a link to my Rome playlist if you want to see my other videos of Rome. 
there should be still one coming out in the future. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel to find a variety of historical topics.